This is the Insecurity Brief Podcast. It features tech news and analysis throughout the world. This podcast is made possible through advertising and listeners like you. If you can't donate, please share this program. We depend on you. Good morning. We're really glad that you could be with us and help us out by sharing this program with anybody that you can in any form of social media that you got, even email. What we've got for you today is Microsoft's event uh, system got shared a little bit more than intended. Massive Bluetooth exploit affects billions of devices. And South Africa is the latest victim of ransomware. If you've ever attended an online event hosted by Microsoft or LinkedIn and used Event Builder to register attendees for the event, then you may be among the people that had their information leaked There was an estimated over 100,000 people affected by this. The leak was spotted by Bob Diachenko and responsibly disclosed by Diachenko and Clario Tech, according to a new report out Monday by Audrey Schoenek of Clario Tech. The event builder platform is widely used by Microsoft and integrated with their team solutions. Shynuk reports that the data was stored on Microsoft Azure Blob Storage, Microsoft's object storage solution for the cloud. We've talked about that a lot recently. The storage in question was supposed to be partially public to host record sessions for link-only access. However, for some reason, the webinar organizers were putting registration information into the blob. This meant it was publicly indexed by public bucket search, gray hat hat warfare, thus compromising the personal information and potentially putting them in the danger of being targeted by hackers and nation states across the globe. The data was first spotted on June 10th, 2021 and reported to an event builder that day. Clario reports that the event builder addressed the leak, but but they offered no comment or statement. Clario's report did not offer an exact count, but a companion press release estimated that there was approximately 1 million CSV JSON files impacting more than 100,000 registrants. The records include first name, email address, company name and position in the company, phone numbers, questions answered. You can find more details about this in our in our links or Uh, out on our website and look in the show notes. Okay, so a new story came out on The Record by Caitlin Simpanyu called Billions of Devices Impacted by New Bracktooth Bluetooth Vulnerabilities. So a team of researchers published details on September 1st about a suite of 16 vulnerabilities that impact Bluetooth software stack that ships with system-on-chip boards from several popular vendors. Um, the vulnerabilities collective known as Bracktooth allow attacks to crash, freeze devices, or worst case, execute malicious code, which would lead to an entire takeover. Wow. Yeah, I mean, we we all know that Bluetooth has been vulnerable for forever. Yeah, but um, this really um, 
put the icing on the cake too. And, you know, there's a lot of things that because this involves the manufacturing process where it's pre-deployed system on chip stuff, um, this is going to go like right over to the straight to the Chinese and then shove it in all kinds of devices that you wouldn't even expect. The Internet of Things, cars, I mean, it is going to be all over the place and spread like crazy. Did yeah. They said that in that article that were like 1,400 different chipsets. Yeah, the same Bluetooth software stacks are used on 1,400 chipsets used in laptops, smartphones, industrial and Internet of Things devices. But they speculate that it... While they only did tests on a on a handful of vendors, that it's probably a, a lot more. Yeah, a lot more devices and a yes. lot more things. So this is going to sit in the background and just be a thing. You know, one of the things that um, the one of the things too is because of this. How many, you know, you just think about all these Bluetooth devices being an attack vector. People will like walk around with um, even like Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. Uh, um, and the devices that people sell throughout retail can have these exploits and toys can have these exploits and an attacker could use this as a pivot and a way to get onto a home network or onto a corporate network. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The, the main, you know, if you're not familiar with pivot, um, pivots, a common term used to control one take control over one device so that you can bounce and use that as a gateway to other devices so it's only one step to get into the bluetooth stack and then into the network wi-fi vpn corporate network stack yeah it's like an open door yeah it is really scary stuff HeimdellSecurity.com released an article on September 6th, 16th by Andra Andriade uh, called South Africa Ransomware Attacks Go On With One More Hit, The Whole Network of the Department of Justice Affected. So apparently on the 6th of September, South Africa's Department of Justice was hit by a ransomware attack that targeted its network and managed to encrypt its entire systems. Thus, electronic services were not available anymore, neither internally nor to the public. They're quoted as saying, this has led to all information systems being encrypted and unavailable to both internal employees as well as members of the public. As a result, all electronic services provided by the department are affected, including issuing letters of authority, bail services, email, and the department website. While they did many steps to try and recover, there is a system restoration in progress, their, their IT said. Their contingency plan was activated, um, and they switched to a manual process in court sittings, meaning that hearings were recorded using a manual mode same applying to different legal documents issuing, for example, documentation for bereaved families need for dear loved ones in exceptional cases. There is a monthly child maintenance money, which they announce is being kept secure for payment to the rightful beneficiaries while the systems are being brought back online. It is interesting to mention that there was a another ransomware cyber attack around the same time period against SANSA, the South African National Space Agency. And, and what happened there was SANSA's students' record were identified on a public FTP server and there was leakage of data. 
which is done accidentally. So it's unsure. It's unclear whether this was political or uh, someone upset they didn't make bail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, one thing that was good about this is that they actually, it sounds like they had a uh, disaster plan in place and they implemented it. That's a good thing that yeah. they actually had a disaster plan. So many companies forget about disaster planning and they get caught off guard. And they, and they really literally lose everything because they don't know what to do and they don't have a way to go backward. I, I agree with you totally. That actually used to be part of my job when I worked in various roles is I used to have to create disaster recovery plans and then test them. And I do encounter a few disasters that I experience professionally and trying to get scramble to get the tape back up and recover from tape backup, which is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So can, yeah. No, I, I've been there myself and <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> used the disaster plan to remove, to move data centers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's a nasty one. <laughs> Hey, it worked, these, but <laughs> these poor guys, yeah, it was disaster after disaster for them. But sounds like they are doing their best to bring it back online. So yeah, Africa, by the way, has been a, just a total nightmare with my, well, ransomware. I mean, it's not just them; it's like a whole bunch of countries across the entire continent have been hit. So wow, you know you you just follow what's going on there and um it's really a hard thing hey uh anyway guys thank you for joining us don't forget to share this on whatever form of social media you believe in and uh we will see you next time i'm trip i'm honey